Hello students, welcome back to this video on Marketing Research Data Analysis Assignment 2 using Excel. What we're going to go here, do here, is we're going to calculate a confidence interval for the proportion of people that replied with uh, very satisfied or satisfied choices. So we're going to combine those proportions and we're going to conduct an hypothesis test for the proportion and then um, and then we're going to go into the scale data and do a confidence interval for the average and a hypothesis test for the average as well. Let's go back to our data we have. It is a little smaller. So it says to go into frequency table. Let's get rid of our graph here. Calculate the combined proportion. Very satisfied, satisfied. So basically we want those two numbers out of 100. So 46 out of 100, our standard proportion is, um, our population proportion is 0 0.46, 46 percent. I'm going to bring over, I'm going to do this on paper here. So we want um, our sample proportion is 42. Sample size is 100. We are developing 95% confidence interval, so our Z value is going to be 1.96. What we do here is sample proportion confidence interval uses this formula here. You can do all this in Excel if you want. I'm going to do it on paper. Forty-two. One minus point four two is point five eight divided by one hundred. So our confidence interval forty-two plus or minus. Let me quickly do this math. We get approximately it's 9.7 percent. Let's just round that up to 10 percent. So I'll just round it, put it there. Nine zero nine seven. So this would be confidence interval 42 percent plus or minus approximately 10 percent. So a 95 percent confident that the true proportion is somewhere between 32 percent and 52 percent. So the second part of this is to conduct an hypothesis test for the proportion. Where is my mouse? There it is. Let's go over here. An hypothesis test for the proportion. This is the assumed number is 75%, at least 75%. Oops. That's what someone believes to be true. We're testing the opposite, that it's less than 75%. This is a one-tailed test. Our sample proportion we just found was 42. Sample size is 100. And we're testing at, I need to put that in there. We're testing at 5%. It's not, I, not clearly stated in the question, but I uh, will make that change. So our Z value we need, our critical value, it's a one-tailed test, alpha is 5%, our Z value is going to be 1.64. Our test statistic Z, 0.42 minus 0.75 divided by the square root of our standard error proportion using sample proportion that, or population proportion p times 1 minus p over 100. So let me do this quick calculation over here. We 
get a big number. We get 7.62. Basically means our decision rule is to reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic is greater than a critical value. 7.62 is greater than a critical value 1.64. Therefore, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. We can calculate a p-value as well. Um, p-value is going to be really small. p-value is going to use this chart. The assignment does not ask for a p-value, but the project does. I'm going to show you how to do that using this chart here. So our test statistic is 7.62. It is... See, the p-value is a one-tailed test. P-value is this number right here, or this number here. 1.26 times 10 to the negative 14. So it's a very, very small number. So that's the number you're going to have to cite in the um, in the report. So basically, the p-value is really, really small. P-value is telling us the probability of observing this sample difference, sample proportion given the population proportion is true, is, you know, zero, almost technically zero percent. It shouldn't happen. Which means just gives us more evidence to reject the null hypotheses. So on the next sheet, we have here on the scale sheet, it says, do the following, construct a 95% confidence interval for the average in Q2, question two, which is right there. Let me just bring these ones down. Um, and then conduct an hypothesis test for the average in question two. The population average is assumed to be at least four. So I'm going to use question one. So our count is 105, our average is 3.25, I will say. Standard deviation 1.34. So let me just write those numbers down to the side. 3.25 and a count of 105. So first of all, um, confidence interval for the average in question one. So this is our confidence interval formula. It uses a t-value based on half of alpha and degrees of freedom n minus one, and then our standard error. We have everything, our average is 3.25. We'll come back to this t-value. Standard deviation is 1.34. Sample size is 105. So to find the correct t-value, we're going to go to this Excel file. We want to find, we're doing a confidence interval, 95%. Our um, sample size is 105. Our t-value is going to be 1.983. Nine eight three. Let's do this math. Divided by the square root of sample size, we get something that looks like this: three point two five plus or minus point two six. So 95% confident that the true proportion, or the true population mean, the population mean is somewhere within that interval. The next, the last part of this is an hypothesis test for the question, for the date in question two. I'm going to use question one to sh help show this. The population average is assumed to be at least, uh, at least equal to four. So we're going to write that down here. Population average greater than or equal to four. We're testing the opposite. Our sample data tells us that the average was 3.25 based on a sample size of 105. The question does not state this, but I will make sure we know this. We're going to test at 5% level of significance, and our standard deviation is. 1.34. So we need a t value, a critical value based on t, um, not based on alpha over 2, just based on alpha and degrees of freedom, 
n minus 1. This is our critical value. We're going to go find that critical value based on our uh, T chart here. 5% level of significance, sample size is 105. <coughs> one degree of freedom, I mean one, um, one tail test. So our critical value is 1.66. It's going to be negative 1.66, two tail or one tail test. <coughs> Critical values are going to be positive or negative. Our test statistic, T, is a sample average, <coughs> 3.25 minus 4 over the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. So we divide by the standard error. Let's work this out. We get a value of 5.74 approximately. Our decision rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic, which we just calculated to be 5.74, is greater than our critical value that we found. This is negative 5.74. So we will reject the null hypothesis. That's supposed to be an R. It does not look like an R. Reject the null hypothesis. Reject H0. So basically rejecting the null hypothesis, we can do this. Basically there is evidence to indicate that the average is less than 4. We can calculate a p-value as well for this. P-value, once again, is the probability of observing the sample data given that the uh, population value is true. There's our p-value. To find our p-value, we go to this Excel file that we can use. It's a t-value. The value is uh, 5.74. Enter it as a positive value when you're doing this. Makes it a little easier. Our p-value is this number here. It's a one-tail test. Look at all those zeros. 4.72 times 10 to the negative 8. So as a probability, it, observing this type of difference uh, should not occur. This is beyond um, anything that we should observe. So we have that just tells us again that we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So that is what you are asked to do for your two assignments, uh, which is a build up to your data analysis that you will be doing for the final report.